your question was, why would I need a D-level? Well, here's what happens. First, your sleep gets better if we're successful and your back pain goes away and your menstrual cycle starts to be regular and all these things happen to you. And then things start to get screwed up and you don't really know if it went too low or if it's now too high because they feel very similar. That means over time, the next step is, okay, these three things have come back. Let's do your D-level and see where it is. And I want you to remember what it feels like. I'll use myself as an example. For the last three years or so, when my D falls from 63 to 58, I start to get a visual aura of migraine. I get this weird flickery thing that's like a quintessential textbook <clears throat> visual aura of migraine. And then I start to get a little headache after it. It's not terrible. In the background, I probably I knew I had migraine. But the weird thing is my brain still knows the difference between 63 and 58, which is mind boggling for me. Okay. Now that doesn't mean that every single person needs to have a D level of 65. It means that I still tell people, look, if your body says X and it's different than what I tell you happened in 8,000 other people, your body is always right. Okay. So that's think about it in the proper way, which is these are the observation and all these other people. That doesn't necessarily mean it, that's going to be the case for you. But the fascinating part for me has been that this observation has been relatively constant throughout. Okay. Now there are other modifiers that you need to know about, but the reason why you need that is to say, okay, well, I just found out that my D level went to 85. And then you write down what the symptoms were that came back because then, then the next thing you do is to say, okay, now I have two data points. These are the symptoms I had when my D was too low. These are the symptoms that came right back when my D was too high. So then you actually have a level to go to, to reassure yourself that what I should do now is to go up or go down. And so then if things get wonky again, and if we test that marker and it's within range, so then we can actually sort of consider that maybe it's probably not vitamin D and then consider other factors. So that makes a lot of sense. I had this ridiculously medicine-based fantasy that D was the thing that was deficient and you're just going to give vitamin D. And keep in mind that I believe that even one hormone, hormones don't fix people. Sleep fixes people. Sleep is extraordinarily complicated. And what you're doing is you're repairing every single organ in your body. That is extremely complicated. Now, one of the things that I saw when I first started was I all I had was CPAP. I just became fascinated with sleep. And I noticed that when they started to use CPAP, their diabetes went away. They went down to one hypertensive medicine. Their cholesterol went down. Well, the pulmonologists, the lung doctors that were assigned this problem because the nurses called them when they stopped breathing originally are telling us it's drops in oxygen. None of my patients had drops in oxygen. It's not that. It's staying in these deeper restorative phases of sleep. The complexity of what is happening throughout your body when you get into those phases is truly overwhelming. You're really mentioning all of it. Now, if you start with that as your final goal, one, I believe that sleep is a better doctor than any doctor. In fact, doctors are trained to put a Band-Aid on a thing that went wrong. Right. The body is designed to keep anything from going wrong. That's miraculous. That means when I'm approaching it from that way, every time a person comes in with something going wrong, their sleep should be addressed. That means when I start to do these studies and the CPAP is not needed because they don't have apnea, and these are all young, healthy people, they're probably at the beginning of this. And everything about this is the brain. That means I start to look for the brain. And then I start wondering, well, what's happening in this part of the brain stem where those D receptors are? Why are these people not getting paralyzed correctly? That's really a neurologic problem. That's not an airway problem. So I'm thinking about it in a totally different way. And then I do D and the D makes them better. Everything I just told you. And then at the end of two years, after Walter and I have published this article, everything falls apart. <laughs> like, whoa, I start to get this weird buttock pain. My sleep is a little worse because I'm thinking of the D as something that's pivotal to make repairs because I'm thinking about it, looking through the sleep lens. Okay. I'm looking at it in a different way. I'm saying, okay, we're sleeping better. I don't want them to be unconscious. They're not laying there like a lump. They're making repairs in their body. That means they'll need more magnesium, more calcium. They're making these repairs. They will actually need all more of the B vitamins. They'll need more A and more E because every single one of those components that we've that are pivotal for our cellular function, every single one of those, their need for them goes up. 